Okay, well, now obviously we, we don't want to have to run this every time, keep pressing the run button uh, like we just did. Uh, I'll do it again. If I uh, take my list of 20 numbers, 20 random numbers, and run once, I do one run through the bubble sort. And the output of that is written back through a local variable to this initial array. It's still not sorted, but it's better. And I run it again and again and again and I keep running it and every time it runs if any swaps occur if it finds any numbers where the first number is bigger than the second number like for instance here um, well a swap occurs and the swap light will come on I keep running it and this the sorting gets better and better and better uh, until I've run it enough that I do a complete run through and check every number in its next number and see if a swap is necessary. And if I find it isn't, the swap light stays off and I know I'm done and these are in order. Still, it means I have to keep clicking this button to run the, the VI 10 times, 20 times. This was, it took 16 runs through this list of 20 numbers. If I had a thousand numbers, it would take a long time. So it's not how I want to do it. I, I want it to be automatic. I want to hit run once and have the VI run through the data doing swaps as many times as it needs to. So what I actually need is, in fact, another loop. So what I want this time is a, uh, a for loop, not, sorry, not a for loop, a while loop. A while loop is different than a for loop. It runs until um, until something changes. A for loop, this one runs a certain number of times. This for loop runs as many times as it needs to until basically this terminal gets uh, a true signal or a false signal. You can right click on it and choose how it operates. You can have this loop keep running until, um, <coughs> pardon me, you can have it um, keep uh, stop when it gets a true signal here or continue if it gets a true signal here. We want the continue type, and we'll see why. Um, also, what we're going to do is every time we run, instead of taking this local variable, getting the result of the run, writing it to a local variable that puts the sorted data back to the original one, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm not going to do that anymore, so I'm not going to ever change my initial array. Instead, what I'm going to do is add a shift register to this do loop. And I'm going to initialize the shift register. So the shift register gets the initial array first. It's going to take that initial array, and that is what it's going to send to the shift register of the for loop. So I've got a do loop with a shift register containing the array, and it passes that to the for loop. The for loop will take this data and run through it and swap or not swap the elements to get a slightly better version of it. But it won't be complete until the swap occurred light goes off. So I'll take this slightly better set of data and send it to the shift register of the do loop. The data that comes in here um, after the first run of the for loop uh, ends up back here and it runs it again through the for loop. It comes here and comes back here and runs it again through the for loop and it'll keep running this loop. It'll keep running through the list of data making swaps where necessary and it'll keep going well forever or at least until this terminal gets a false signal. It'll continue if true. Well, if the swap light is on That means um, you should keep going. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this local variable and I'm going to pass it out of the array or out of the, the for loop. Um, so at the end of the for loop, this local variable will contain a true or false. It'll contain a true if a swap occurred, which means you have to do it again, do this loop again, or if it's false, if this is off, it means that it ran through this entire for loop, looked for each pair of numbers and didn't find any that needs to swap, which means it's done. 
So if this is um, false, it means no swaps occurred and we can stop the do loop. So I'll run this to a tunnel. Uh, sorry, this should be a, um, a read command. It's, it's sending output from the, uh, the light. And I'll run it to the tunnel. And again, remember on for loops, tunnels are by default indexing. We want to turn that off. We want the last value. We don't want an array of Booleans coming out. That's what you would get if you didn't change this tunnel mode. We run that to this terminal. Remember, this terminal says continue if true. It means this gray box, this do loop, will continue to run until it gets a true signal here. It'll stop when it gets a false signal. A false signal is what happens when this light goes off, meaning that it did a complete run through the data and didn't have to do any swaps. Let's try it again. Again, I'll have to reinitialize this original array so it's not swapped anymore. And let's run it and see what happens. <clears throat> didn't take long. I wonder how many times it had to run. Uh, and here's our, our sorted array. I'll do it uh, again. I'll um, empty this array, data operations, empty it, and let's run it. And it happens very quickly, and we get this uh, sorted, uh, sorted array. I wonder how many times it had to do this loop. We could find that out because basically as many runs really as this had to do, it means as many times as this do loop executed. We have this little increment um, uh, terminal on the do loop. What we can do is run it to a tunnel on the do loop. Tunnels on do loops by default are not indexing. They could be indexing, but it's last value by default. If you put a tunnel on a for loop, by default it's indexing. They're just different. And we'll run this to create an indicator and we'll call it um, runs required. And it'll tell us how many times it had to run through the data in order to um, get the data sorted. A little picky thing, this thing starts at zero. So it means if this loop runs six times, what comes out of here is a five. So I'll just insert a plus one command so that the runs required is, is really the right number. And let's go back and let's try this again. And it turned out it took 16 times. We had to run through this data, swapping or not swapping as we go, 16 times until we ran through it with no swaps, meaning we're finished. And that's what gets written uh, to this sorted array. Let's try this with a bigger data set. I have a set here I'm copying from off screen. I'm going to delete. Well, maybe I won't delete. Um, if I paste. Here's an array that contains uh, a thousand random numbers. And what I'll do is, in the diagram, where did that show up? Here it is. I'll simply connect that up to where the other array was and delete the old wire. So basically, I've taken the array with 20 numbers and replace it with an array of a thousand numbers in it. And I'll just delete the old one. And if we go back to the panel, here's the input array. Here's what it's going to be when it's sorted. Let's run it and see how long it takes. A little bit of time. And we can see uh, each run, we can see the results um, of how it changes and evolves and gets better and better sorted here. It keeps running keeps running as many times as it needs to. It turned out it had to run through this list of a thousand numbers. It had to do that 956 times. Well, it worked. Let's put the um, vertical scroll bar on here. And as we scroll down the original numbers, they're just in random order, numbers from zero to 5,000 in random order. And here we have those same numbers, but sorted. The thing about the bubble sort is an extremely inefficient, terrible way of sorting numbers. There's much better ways to do it, but this one does work, and it's a simple one, and it's good for learning this programming technique of for loops.